Cello, I'm going to run intro in three, two, one. Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. We're a couple of dreamers with a longing to explore the world's natural wonders, food, and cultures. To live by the wind, current, and the sun. We sold our dream home of 16 years that we remodeled with love and attention to every detail, along with most of our possessions, and moved on to our catamaran wanderlust across the canal. We're looking for adventure and freedom in harbors unknown, but for now, we're starting in our own backyard. Click the subscribe button to come along for the ride. Hi, hi everybody. I'm so excited. I've been chasing these guys for about six months. I'm so <laughs> thrilled with their story, you know, which is in, in a way has some relation to, to, to my story as well. I've known Fabio from uh, my days at Cleveland Clinic. You, you saw uh, Dr. Steven Wexner some episodes ago. Uh, yeah. We didn't have the chance to be in the operating room at the same time. He was a, a little later than that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we've, we've known each other for some time. And then all of a sudden, I found out that he's, the, he's going into chasing his dream of sailing the world with the beautiful wife. So I was so uh, 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 fascinated with your story that I've been actually advertising that I was chasing you. So, so <laughs> real, so real and happy to have hey, it here right now. That is an understatement. I'm telling you for two months, he's like, hey, Keone, I've got my people Wednesday. I'm like, okay, great, I'll move my schedule. Hey, Keone, cancel that. We're gonna do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, hey, cancel that again. <laughs> I was just like, it's okay. Yeah. We'll get them when we get them. I'm so sorry, sorry, so sorry. about that. It's just been so it, hectic. Yeah, just now we were able to get a uh, Starlink uh, dish. Uh, yeah. And so now we have internet. But until now, it was really working a small SIM card here in Panama. And you get really dismal, dismal speed of internet. And it was impossible to even upload a video for us. So. Um, yeah, it would have been impossible to do this until now. So, well, let me ask you this question before we get into it. Um, because when I've been in those situations where I couldn't get on the internet and couldn't make all the phone calls I want, it was kind of annoying. But then after like the second or third day, it was actually kind of peaceful and pleasant. Yes. <laughs> have exactly. you experienced that? Yes. For sure. For sure. Exactly that, as you described. Two, three days of, uh, uneasiness and then all of a sudden you fall into this new rhythm of life and the sun sets and the sun rises and uh you forget there is a trouble out there you know so yes yeah, yeah and and by the way kioni i encourage everybody to check their youtube channel mm -hmm. you know harbors unknown is so fascinating i've been watching all day today you know and one episode takes to the other one and what I was telling them that I'm fascinated too is that they show everything. So they show, you know, the beautiful sunsets, mm -hmm. but also what it takes to get there. Yeah. So uh, really, I encourage everybody to take a look at it uh, after the show. Awesome. Everybody that's watching, we will put their YouTube link in the description. So you'll be able to go to their YouTube, support, subscribe. Most important thing is subscribe to their channel. Don't just watch their videos. Subscribe for me, please, and support <laughs> these wonderful people. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. let, let's let's move over and and Fabio because uh, uh, no particular order, but because I know you and I actually introduce you. So uh, give us a little bit of background of uh, what your life, your career, and how it uh, what it took you to get to this point that we're in front of the camera right now. Well, so as you know, I, um, I went to medical school in Italy back in the days, and then I came to the United States for training in surgery. 
uh, it was a rough uh, transition to find the uh, residency in general surgery. I eventually was able to get into a residency at Brown University, which is uh, an Ivy League school. So I was very fortunate. And uh, after that, I after graduating, I was in staff at Brown. So I was a faculty at the university, I became an associate professor. Uh, and then I was uh, I went to Florida to do my fellowship in colorectal surgery. And that, that was the same time that you are hanging out there, I think, uh, maybe a couple of years later. And then um, I went back to Brown for, for a few years. And then I came back to the clinic in Florida and I worked with Steve Wexner, and, and who's, a, who's been a mentor for me. Uh, and uh, I met all the other people that you have had on your show. And, you know, it's a, the colorectal surgery community is a small community and an international community. And, and so we know each other everywhere, Argentina, Thailand, Europe, everywhere. It's a, it's, it's a community of friends. And, uh, and then I then abandoned, uh, I had an injury. So I, I went away from, from surgery and I started to do more and more administration. And in 2014, I think, 2009. It was like 2008. 2008, so I started to do more administration. Eventually, I became the uh, chief medical officer at right. the Cleveland Clinic in Weston. And I truly enjoyed that position for many years. Um, and I was able to transition that to uh, to my new job, which is uh, a creator and, uh, and, and a sailor and an explorer. It was a dream that Chris and I had, and uh, we thought that, uh, you know, even though I truly enjoy my job, and it's easy to fall in this routine of doing the same thing, easy thing every day, going back to work becomes so easy to do, to do what, what you do for a long time. And we wanted to see the world, and, and we thought that uh, if, we, if I, especially I am obviously much older, if I got too old, it would be very hard to do what we're about to do, you know. And so, so we sold everything, bought a boat, and here we are. Tomorrow we're gonna cross the Panama Canal, and tomorrow night, if everything goes as planned, we'll be on the Pacific Ocean. All right. So we're not doing the whole let's navigate around Florida in the summer, right? We're not doing that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Chris, tell yeah. me about. Um, the commitment and how, uh, you know, how to stay positive and motivated when you're supporting someone that who's a surgeon, we know that requires a lot of time, a lot of hours, you know, what was that like for you? And um, how were you in your support? Well, I mean, you just have to be there for the person. I think that is really enough at times. And, you know, trying to make sure that, if I'm home first, you know, I'm cooking dinner and and taking the time I get up, we, you know, synced our schedules. So he has to get up early. I get up early. I make coffee, you make breakfast. So it's like these little things that I think are, are, are very helpful to the person kind of mentally, emotionally. And then anytime that you have together, try and make the most of it. Yeah. It's no, it's no secret. It's just the presence of a person that is important, and the not only the emotional support, the physical support too. Of as 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 Kristen said, to be there and help in daily activities. I think it's that's also essential. Yes, I yeah, think like, people, I think people miss that the small things are actually big things, and the things that we think are big are really kind of small. So you're you're saying things that sound so small, but these are big things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That help each other out. So I love that you just said that. Yeah, because every single increment over time, think about on, on, on the life together, mm -hmm. it's it's the, the, the little small thing that can really erode if they're not there, erode the relationship. Yeah. Small, small things that we don't agree on and stuff like that, they can erode. But if you do the little things that make you, you happy, and, and Kristen pointed out to making coffee, coffee mm -hmm. makes you happy in the morning. <laughs> so you wake up, you wake up the aroma of coffee. That smell, you you know, you you get at five get in the truck. morning when you, it's dark. When it's dark, you drink it together. You make that ah, good coffee together. I just pictured you laying in bed and opening your eyes and smelling coffee and going, "Oh my god, exactly. I love her." Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Too many people they try to get the big ones right. Valentine's Day anniversary, and you guys are like, "No, this is an everyday thing." 
<laughs> you awesome. got that right. Love it. So, so on, on that topic, so my internet just uh, failed, but I don't know if you mentioned, but what do you do? And this is the question I had. I thought Keone was going to ask it. So I wanted to anticipate him. Too, you, why but, are you always throwing me under the bus live? No, no, no. But what do you do? So when everything is fine, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But what do you guys do when you have like a normal couple's argument? Mm -hmm. There's no way to hide there. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's in interesting boat. question in the boat, right? In yeah. The boat, question. So she can't make you sleep outside in the ocean. <laughs> she, she could, you know. It's a, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And um, we try not to have arguments. Mm -hmm. And you try to always keep in mind that really you have to go back to the basics of what you are. You, you know, we are a couple that has been together for many years. We are a couple that we know uh, that we love each other, that we have really a, a good relationship. And sometimes if you find yourself arguing over something, you have to say, you know, we, she says or I say, somebody has to say, wait a minute, you know, this is silly. Mm -hmm. it's just silly and we don't have we in fact we never have argument about important stuff it's, no we don't <laughs> no. No, no we don't never. no if if, if if something is it's sometimes it's a stupid thing and maybe you know i'm in a bad mood or, or Kristen is a bad mood or so, uh, we're tired it's been a long day maybe the boat has not behaved properly you know <laughs> and we then haven't slept. we haven't slept because sometimes you don't sleep for a lot so you get tired, you get cranky, and maybe you argue about something silly, and then you have to remind yourself, this is silly. This is nothing. As, and, as we, are, we are in the relationship topic. So my question that I had is, when did you guys share uh, this dream? Was it when you were dating? Was it afterwards? Was, how, how, how did you know that you had this similar vision or, or, or you know, about doing this? You answer because you, you really say it well. Oh, so it was probably, I guess. So Fabio started you watching YouTube sailing videos and he really just enjoyed mm -hmm. watching those. And so I started watching them with him and it, we it really kind of opened our eyes to this lifestyle that a whole lot of people were living and that it was actually something that was feasible, impossible. And so we started talking about it. Uh, it was probably in like, I don't know, 2016 yeah. or something, like just ro romanticizing about it back right. then. And we had already been together a long time. We started dating in 2001. So yeah. we had already been together a long time. And so then it, it really started to kind of grow this yeah. desire because we just felt like um life was very uh repetitive almost it you can know? become yeah, yeah even if like you're you were challenged in your job and i had a, a career that i enjoyed but just watching these videos and seeing these people live this life on the water and traveling to new places and having these experiences, both of us love to travel and love yeah. that whole idea of experiencing new cultures. And so we thought, well, why can't we do that? Yeah. <laughs> and started crunching the numbers to see if it really was yeah. possible. And once we realized it was possible, we started to take steps to make it happen. Yeah. Look for a boat. You know, as the yeah. idea. And you had the thing, because I always say uh, nothing's an original thought, right? Every, there's people who have ideas and there's people who implement them. And the one of the things, not knowing you both a day at all, I know the one thing you both had to had was discipline because you could have that dream. And once you crunch those numbers and see what you have to do, knowing what to do and doing it is two totally different things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they say, uh, Results are like 10% ideation and 90% perspiration, you know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so so when you said, okay, so we started talking about it and then it comes to the point that you make the decision. Take yeah. us to, the, to that process. So when you said, okay, this is feasible, let's do this to, <clears throat> you know, in the videos you can see when you guys... 
uh, describe that you sold your your dream house that you put so much into it when you received the the boat and then all the things but what does it take for that moment that you said yeah let's do it to actually do it you know yeah, oh, it, yeah it, it is it's a it's a great question and, you know it comes a point that you have an idea and you, you just have to rip the band-aid you just have to say all right we're going to sell the house so you have to sell the house. We're gonna buy a boat, and you have to sign that contract and buy the boat. You have to write yourself step by step all the things you need to do, and just do them one after the other, and take a chance. You have to take a chance because you, you don't like. For example, for us, so we bought the boat, and COVID hit. Yeah, and it's funny because we, you were looking for a boat for two years, and for me it was like, okay, listen, I, I can't go through this seesaw of emotions for, you know, the next two, three, four, five years, right? If we're going to do this. We have to do this. And so we ultimately decided to buy a new boat because it was the only boat that really uh, checked all the boxes of what we wanted in, in a boat. In a boat yeah. And so then the broker called us and he said, listen, you know, the boat show is coming up. If you guys don't buy now, you're not going to have a slip for like two, three more years, you know, like a slot mm -hmm. for a boat for like two, three more years. And so we just said, you know what, let's just do it. And so we jumped, you know, at one point you have to jump or rip off the bandaid. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Fabio. Go ahead. So, you know, if, if, if you don't know the boat market during COVID, everybody was buying boats so that you could not find it a used catamaran right. you know you just don't find one and then you have the the hurricanes that destroy some cats so and this boat the next available boat of this make is going to be in 2026 or 27. yeah it's, so it's, it's not like funny it's funny how life you know puts you in those situations with uh you need to make a decision. You've been kind of boiling it, but then boom, it hits you and you have to leave that comfort zone, right? Yes. That even though you have it, but you're not so uh, thrilled about yeah. it. And then yeah. all of a sudden, leave that comfort zone, that situation, and let's make a decision. And then yeah. let's not look back, you yeah. know? It's, it's, it's yeah. it, another part of that is that initial step, right? Once you sold the house, you're all in. If you still had the house, then it's always a thought. I remember when I used to didn't make much money and I wanted to go somewhere like on a vacation and I'm always trying to plan on, well, I'll buy it next month. I'll buy it next month. And what I had to learn to do when I didn't have any money was I would buy a one-way ticket from the destination I wanted to go home. So now I'm forced to buy a ticket sometime to get there. So that was my little trick to like get me to get the tickets. <laughs> like, That's awesome. I like that. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. The, the other thing that I see very often, and it's mm -hmm. really uh, kind of uh, uh, the mentality in this beautiful country is that, you know, you will never look like you're going to have enough when you do that leaving the career behind and enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the, the thinking in your case? Yeah, so that's a, it's another excellent uh, uh, point because that was a point in my career as a CMO at the clinic where my, my next step was, you know, was possibility of uh, becoming the president of a hospital, one of the hospitals we bought or in another organization. So that was the, the next and the age was right, you know, you know uh, late 50s, early 60s, when you make the move. And um, I, I decided not to do that. I decided to just uh, get on the boat. I, it's, it, it's, it's hard to explain. Many, many of my colleagues and people, when, when I told them, they looked at me like I had four heads. But, uh, <laughs> well, my grandfather would be proud of you because my grandfather was the one that told me. He said, my generation was taught to work work, 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 save, 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 retire. And then he's like, now I'm 70 and I don't want to be around anybody. So he's like, make sure you do it at the time that you enjoy yeah. it. So yeah. how did you, did you guys, have you mapped out your entire journey or are you going with the flow? No, we, 
not the entire journey, but we have a loose plan, have a loose plan simply that. because when you sail around the world and for us, mm -hmm. it, the goal is not to sail around the world. The goal is to travel and visit all of these beautiful places. And that is happens to take us around the world because once you start, you go with the trade winds and you go with the seasons, right? So mm -hmm. now is the time to sail west, you know, from Panama to French Polynesia. And then that season, you know, they start a cyclone season there, I believe, uh, like so in at the end of October or November. So they have their cyclone season from, say, like, I think November to April. So then, you know, you need to go and, uh, be in a place, for instance, we're thinking to po probably go to New Zealand, which still gets some storms, like they had a storm about a few weeks ago, but, not but it's not, it's technically outside of the cyclone belt. So with insurance, you're, you know, you meet the requir yeah. requirements of your insurance. So then after that cyclone season is over in French Polynesia, then we'll go back up and do the Western kind of Pacific islands yeah. and then continue on based on the seasons and the wind, because that's just how the weather works. So how that idea. Of, I'm sorry. Hold Go on ahead. a second. There was a, there was a frozen lag. I wanted to ask you, yeah. um, I want to skip for, cause you know, we don't have uh, 50 hours. Um, no. <laughs> let's just plan it out and you guys are in the boat and you're ready to take off to go to that first destination. Take me through that feeling. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of work preparing the boat. It's a lot of work because if you think about it, the, the uh, crossing from from Panama to Marquesa to Nukuhiva is just about four thousand miles, and so it's a, we, anywhere between three weeks to a month in the ocean, and you're away from everybody. Uh, in fact, at some point when you're right in the middle of it, the closest person to you is likely to be on the International Space Station on orbiting on top of you so uh so it's really far out there mm -hmm. and there is no help inside you know you have to fence for yourself you need to be autosufficient so you have to make your own water your own energy uh, you move with the wind you bring your own food you try to catch your own food but the boat needs to be checked make sure that all the parts all the moving parts are working well and uh that's what we've been doing for the past week and that's what we will do for the next week when we're in panama and uh, we have some friends coming on with us we have friends on board now people came us came here and they're helping us to go across the canal a couple of engineers they've been checking everything on the boat which is awesome and then we're gonna have two more uh two two more engineers come on other friends they're gonna come on on the boat and stay with us with the passage one is a one is a uh electrical engineer one is a mechanical engineer like a, a diesel mechanic basically a diesel engineer and so we're going to go through the engines make sure everything works okay all the electronics make sure everything's okay check the rigging check the sail check the boat uh provision food and water and then uh and then you know you do get butterfly in your stomach it, it, it's it's exciting but it's also a little part of the thing little, yeah a little worrisome and then yeah, you know, and, and you mentioned you mentioned preparing the boat, but in my mind also you need to prepare mentally and physically because yeah. I've seen your videos. So the question is, uh, everybody has a different way to prepare mentally. That's on your own. But yeah. my question is, uh, how do you try to keep fit? So uh, is that working on the boat only like i saw in the videos or do do you do like yoga or anything else so for that the poster child of that is kristen the question <laughs> is for kristen really she is she is working out every day i i try to work out yeah five days a week for sure i do yoga one day and then i do uh different hit workouts and when i can i uh go for a run twice a week if you know if we're yeah. close to land close to somewhere where i can yeah. go for a run yeah. so that is huge for me really 
not only physically, but also mentally, you just really get the endorphins going, clears your mind, yeah. really a big stress reliever. So that for me is, is huge. I make it a priority. You could always push him overboard and say, all right, swim to the boat. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, so we do, we do, we do stuff like we do, we go spear fishing, we swim, we, we do. That is great. That exercise. is a great activity, great exercise. Yeah. I do, I do yoga. I'm not that, that, uh, really <laughs> about it, no. but I, I do yoga. I do, you know, I have this, this app, this Nike app that you do abs, legs, upper body. So I, I try to stay as fit as I can. I do have some orthopedic injuries that prevent me from doing many things, but I, I compensate around those trying to stay as fit as possible. Yeah. It's important. You cannot do this if you're not fit. It's difficult. Uh, absolutely. It's very, very absolutely. Difficult. As a matter of fact, what you just said, Christine, is we had the episode, uh, the last episode before this one, uh, talking about fitness, uh, trying to debunk some of the myth. And we talk a lot about, you know, the endorphin high that we can get, you know, with the with the exercise, getting fit and, and also the self-confidence that it brings. And, you know, it definitely in what you do, it's so important to be fit because uh you know there's a lot of uh, natural working out in what you're you're doing and accomplishing and i want everybody to understand they're sailing around uh the world they're doing this themselves this is not a guy who retired and, and got a captain and a 20 person crew and they're on some giant boat and they're just lounging around this is not that's why you got to check out that youtube channel it's not that type of uh sailing <laughs> Yeah. So, so another question for you, Christine, is you look fantastic in all the videos. I know that. You look fantastic <laughs> now. How do you take care of your hair, your makeup, and things like that when you're in the? Well, are you? You think the ocean was gonna stop her from doing that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, very good question. Uh, so, we have been close enough to land where like I could still, you know, I found a hairdresser in Panama city and got my hair done. And she was actually fabulous. She had worked in London for many years and actually I'm going to try and go back to see her right before we leave. <laughs> so that'll then give me, you know, the six months in Polynesia. And then when I get to New Zealand, I'll have to find someone new. <laughs> yeah. And... I, it, yeah. That's exactly right. I still can't find a good hairdresser for me. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I, I just bought a, a nice uh, yeah. electric shaver. And now I'm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, me and him are doing it the right way. This is low maintenance, yeah. right? This yeah. is low it maintenance. Is. Well, I'm we're kind glad. of doing it the right way in our beers. So we have yeah, that in common. Cool. Yeah. I'm so glad you said what you said, Chris, because I, I was like, please don't give me some deal about, oh, I use seaweed and seawater or something. Oh, God, like, no. I like, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I get highlights and uh, yeah, have my hair nice. freshly cut. Yes. Love it. Uh, what, awesome. What's been your, um, what place have you enjoyed stopping at and eating the most? Uh, stopping at and eating the most, I would probably say Maine, just because yeah. my main, um, Maine lobster is one of my absolute favorite foods. And I grew up, my dad was a commercial diver and he would come home and our fridge would just be, you know, stuck full of lobster. So I grew up eating that. And for me, it really is just, uh, yeah. such a treat. And we were anchored right by where the lobster men come in and, you know, and sell, like deliver their daily catch per se. So we could, you know, just run over and grab the fresh lobster from them and, and enjoy. And that was yeah. fabulous. So far. So far. Hey, listen, I, got a different, I got a different one for you. Part two is going to go for you. What's been the place that you were most surprised that you, that you liked the food? Oh, um, I think San Blas, we got some nice fish. Probably San Blas, yeah. yeah. Probably San Blas, because I was really surprised. They have octopus, a lot of octopus. Which yeah, octopus, some uh, good, good fish, like uh, snappers. and. Yep, and conch. conch. A lot amazing. of conch, which was amazing. The lobster. And some lobster, yeah. Ooh, shrimp. Shrimp, delicious shrimp. So the seafood on this, on this side of the world, especially when we're going to be on... A, 
on the Pacific side, it's probably going to be even better. Mm -hmm. But there's some very good seafood here. And we like to cook that and eat it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so so a, another question on a different angle, but it's the communicating part. Uh, I, I know by looking at your background, sorry about that, Kristen, is that you were into marketing, photography, and all that. So the question is, when you were envisioning all this, chasing this dream, do you have already thought of also, uh, you know, documenting it and, and, and sharing it, or it was something that came after you went into it? No, we planned to do the channel and document yeah. everything because I am still relatively young. So I wanted to have something that I could do and, you know, say like, you know, if we decided that we, you know, this wasn't for us, you know, I would still have built this skill set. Portfolio. Of, right. Yeah. And the portfolio of work. And so if we decided this wasn't for us, that I would still be able to go and do something after. Whereas like if I just wasn't doing anything, then it would be really difficult to go back into the um, workforce. The wor yeah. yeah. Into the workforce. Yep. Yeah. And not only that, I, I really enjoy, like I loved, uh, I came from photography, so I, I love photography. So I love documenting and sharing stories about uh, different cultures and places. And, and by the way, the cinematography in some of those videos is, is amazing. Thank so you. Uh, yeah, really, I really enjoy that. So awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, you definitely, when you're done with this, definitely can't go back to just like a regular old job. It'll just drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah, that would be really difficult. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. You have any other questions? I think uh, I, I I've enjoyed and uh, my my takeaway from a lot of what you guys said is that you know, like you, like me, which is a message is the age, uh, it's just a number and shouldn't be a limit to actually pursue the dreams. You yep. know, it, it's just pushing and, and doing. The next thing I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, what I see is that you're using this passion for sailing as a vehicle to actually do the other main passion which is knowing places and and seeing people and even even uh food different food which is part of the culture yeah. is that is that the right assumption that is the right assumption yes yeah. so the premise of the of the channel which is the premise of the trip is to explore the world the culture of places and and through food really and uh, and experience their mm -hmm. their way of living well, sadly, this this dream isn't mine yet because I can't swim. So that's that's number one. <laughs> uh, that, that I can't swim. So uh, I, I'm going to have to find a different avenue uh, when I do my third retirement. I'm retired from two jobs. There's going to be a third one. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's what I'll figure out what I'm going to do. It's going to be on land, though. But I'm still going to find my way to the food. So, hey, if I still know you and you guys are in Malaysia, I'll gladly fly and meet you there. Okay. All right. All right. Now, Very question: uh, the the main character of of your videos mm -hmm. is she around? Yoda. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yoda. Yoda. Yeah. Yoda. Come here. Uh, I love the oh. the episode that uh, you said. <laughs> Is she able to swim? And she was <laughs> able to swim better than you guys. <laughs> okay. How is she? How is she handling all of this sailing? So Yoda loves to go to new places. She loves to meet new people. Sailing in rough weather is not her favorite. Nope. So she generally <laughs> takes a nap. Yeah. A long one if it's a long passage. She, you know, she does sleep a lot. She loves to just be with us though. I think that's the biggest thing for her. She is um, definitely, you know, a pack animal for yeah. sure. So she loves to sit in the helm seat with us. She loves to cuddle up. And as long as, you know, we're giving her attention, she's happy. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And I enjoyed you guys today. Very positive. 
very happy, infectious smiles. I can tell that your energy just being in the same room with um, you, you're the type of people that are, uh, you can just feel the aura. So I love, I love meeting people like that. Cello is like that too. It's just, I got to get him, I got to get him to shorten his, his, his speeches. That's all. <laughs> hey, I was good today. I was <laughs> interested in hearing from them. Usually, I, if you guys ever go back and watch the video, I'm so proud of Cello because he gets, he's getting better and better and better. Our first couple episodes, his questions were about nine minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're not a surgeon. You're not at residency talking to residents. Shorten it, shorten it. Yeah, that that I had to give it to uh, Dr. Wexner. He he prepared me so much for presentations that I <laughs> believe it was I was doing the same thing, but no. But quite. always great, but it's still great. I I love it, and I I thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to do an episode with us, uh, and hopefully we get to see you again. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank for you so much. Us. Yes, it was great. It was great. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank oh, you, wow. guys. And, and like I always say, uh, the sky's the limit. So, all right. Awesome. <laughs> we, we, we have a lot to do. And it doesn't matter what age, we can do it. We can do it. And you guys are a true inspiration by example. I love thank it. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Check us out in two weeks for the next episode of Cello, Harbors Unknown. Thank you for joining us for Cello and Keone. We'll see you all next time. Right on. <laughs> Bye.